Essentials, Non-Essentials of the Faith Well, first of all, all divine scripture is essential for the believer, but not all divine scripture relates to salvation. Stick around. Let's break this down. Welcome to Keeping It Real with Grandma Jo in faith and in truth. Most use essentials and non-essentials as it relates to the salvation doctrine. If I do this or if I don't do that, if I believe this or if I don't believe that, then am I a Christian or am I truly saved? Other terms used would be non-negotiable and negotiable. Wisdom versus legalism are terms often used for secondary issues and are not referring to the salvation issues. Since all scripture is essential for the believer, and because the word of God is not really negotiable, I prefer to use the terms primary and secondary, kind of like building a foundation. But even the use of these terms is a great example of what I would consider secondary issues. What terms you use has nothing to do with salvation. Let's look at the basic primary doctrines. First, there is a God. He does exist, and there is one God. Monotheism. Let's see what Hebrews 11.6 has to say. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now let's look at Exodus 23. You must have no other God but me. Another primary doctrine is that there is one God, but there are three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's look at a few more verses. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Another primary doctrine is the authority of Scripture. Let's look at Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. So if you don't believe in the authority of scripture, you will not trust its ability that it is a living, active word that brings power to your life. This power of the word of God is what the enemy so desperately wants to undermine or compromise it. Another primary doctrine is Christ, who he is, his power, his birth, his divine nature. Let's talk about several verses that have to do with Christ. The virgin birth of Christ, Matthew 1, 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Christ lived a sinless life, 1 John 3, 5. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Christ died and was crucified for our sin. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Galatians 1.4 Who, which is Christ, gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. Christ's resurrection, 2 Timothy 2.8. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach, Acts 1.9. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. And then later in verse 9, he says, After he said this, which had to do with Christ being seen by and speaking with all of his disciples after his death, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Christ will return again, John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Another primary doctrine is the authority and the deity of Christ. 
Colossians 1, 14 through 16. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And then in Colossians 2, 9, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Another primary doctrine, and these verses almost everyone has heard, is that we are all sinners. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, in whom? Jesus Christ our Lord. Another primary doctrine is that salvation is by faith and not works. Romans 10.9 if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not by works, so that no one can boast. So let's summarize the primary doctrines. God exists, and he is the giver of life and the creator of everything. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are the authoritative and inspired word of God. Christ was fully man and fully God. He was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died for our sins, rose again, and ascended into heaven. And he will come again. Sin exists, we have all sinned, and the penalty of sin is death. And salvation comes through faith in Christ and not of works. These are the primary doctrines of a Christian faith. If we're talking about what clothes to wear, or what language we use, or whether we drink or we don't drink, or maybe even if we have tattoos or no tattoos, these are wisdom issues. So my challenge for all of us this week is not a verse, but I challenge us to seek out and live in the primary doctrines and allow those foundational truths to dictate and guide our wisdom issues. Blessings. And I'll see you next week.